And I'm just like going, and the <laughs> the guards behind me, they were just going, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> they just couldn't believe it. And when I got back into the jail, it didn't take long for it to spread. Everyone was just like, oh, Jesus, I'm so sorry. They all felt so sorry for me. They're like, your parents are absolutely awful. <laughs> Let me ask a little truth. I'd like to know your point of view. So hi you guys. Tell me the one time my parents came to jail, and so I'll tell you that in another video. So here I am to do that, to tell you this other, to do, to share that story with you. I can't remember how long I'd been there at this point. Um, I know I'm not on work release yet, so because you don't have visitation when you're on work release, so it's it was the first, it was in the first three months somewhere in there, and you know I hadn't hadn't heard from no letters or no, no I wasn't able to get a hold of my kids on the phone, you know. One day, it was visitation, it was visitation time was on the weekend, and they called my name. And I was really surprised. And I was, I was super surprised when I came in there, and I saw them sitting there, I was so surprised. I was like, they came here to see me in jail, that's gotta be progress, right? You know, that, that that's a huge step that they would take, you know? I thought, maybe they're gonna like say something kind to me, like, we still love you, or, we believe in you or we hope things are going well for you. You know, something, they look, they look so out of place there. They just look, they just look, I mean, I, could just, I just feel like my mother is just cringing at every, you know, at the whole thing. And, um, you know, I picture this too. It's like, I'm, I'm looking at a bank of chairs that are in front of glass windows and you pick up a phone and you talk through the phone. And they, you know, they're on the other side of the glass. And so, and you're just sitting, you're sitting steps, you know, on stools, one next to the other, one next to the other. Anyway, so I go and I see them kind of crammed in the one little cubicle together. And they, you know, they'll share a phone. They have only one phone. So I go and I sit down, I pick up my phone. And I'm like, hi, you guys. I'm surprised to see you. And I, of course, now you have to remember, I haven't really talked to them in about maybe three years. And, and every time and in that three years between like 2002 and 2005 when i went to jail in 2005 it has just been a constant battle we've been in court numerous times they've tried to do all kinds of really crappy stuff you know try to take my home try to take my kid you know just just terrible stuff steal from me you know help my ex-husband you know just really really bad and you know sabotage friendships you know whatever I'm thinking they're here, so there must be something that, that they want to say to me, you know, and what else would there be to say, but, you know, we love you, we're on your side, you know, hope you're doing well. But, no. We, you know, we get on the phone and we do a little chit chat, a little small talk, you know, how are things going, what's going on, mom, mom shares some trivial stuff. Basically, the conversation about on the level that she like that they like to keep it most 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 of the time, just very superficial, you know, and and um, it doesn't take long because they're I think they're so uncomfortable in this environment and you know, and they came for a purpose. I'm sorry, finally, my dad takes the phone and he he says, "Well, hey, we were wondering if now that you're divorced, if we can have." If you, if we can have uh, your grandmother's china, the china that grandma gave you when you got married, um, because it would look so good with our carpet in our dining room. Okay. I am just absolutely stunned. I mean, the whole idea of thinking about china is so far from my mind. And it, it just, it blow, I don't even have time to think about the fact that how weird it is that they have come here to ask me to give them something. I have nothing left in my life. And they're asking me to give them, you know, one of the few things that I have. And, and, but, and trust me, they have already, they've taken my grandmother's st st jewelry. They've already taken that. It was my inheritance. They tried to get my, my house. They, you know, they've tried all kinds of shady stuff. I didn't have time to even go, go, to, go through all that. All I was thinking was, I was just stunned. I was stunned. How can we be talking about China at a time like this? And I, so I, this is what I did. I go, I take the, I take the phone down and I look down at my, 
chest and it says, you know, property of, you know, or whatever it's like a uh, trustee of the state of Washington or something like that on my sweatshirt, you know. And then I, I look around, I look back at the jail, you know, and I, I see the, the, you know, the guards standing there watching me and the glass and the girls back behind the thing. And I turn back around, I look down, glance, bit the phone back up, my, up to my ear, I go, um, I don't know, have you noticed where I am? Have you noticed what's going on in my life? Don't you think it would be a little strange for me to th be thinking about China at a time like this? <laughs> and I go, and besides that, it's mine. She gave it to me as a gift. And one of her, you know, one of her, you know, last things that she was allowed to do was was bequeath her giant her wedding china to her only granddaughter, and she gave it to me. And what makes you think I would want to give it away? And my dad says, "Well, you're not because you're not married anymore." I go, "I still eat." You know, and, and I'm sure they were thinking, you know, you're not married anymore. We've ruined all your friendships. Are you going to serve on those dishes? But, you know, very short-sighted, you know, obviously, you know, they, they, no faith in my rebuilding my life ever. But, and, and they, they have this, they had this story that they were telling themselves that we had no basis in truth that it, it, so they could justify taking the jewelry and stuff, which was something about that I didn't care about this stuff anymore, that I had, I had, I had um, cut myself off from family, and, and so I, was, I just didn't care about anything anymore. It, you know, or I would probably liquidate it or something, and they wanted to make sure I didn't do that. I was like, you know, anyways. Um, and I was just like, I, I find it really stunning that you guys came here to ask me to give you my china. I was just like, unbelievable. And my, my mother just goes, we don't have to take this. And she <laughs> hangs up the phone and they walk out. That was it. They just hang up the phone and walk out. And I'm just like going. And the, <laughs> the guards behind me, they were just going, oh, my God. <laughs> they just couldn't believe it. And when I got back into the jail, it didn't take long for it spread. Everyone was just like, oh, Jesus, I'm so sorry. <laughs> they all felt so sorry for me. They're like, your parents are absolutely awful. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, man, and they, they had started doing things that were so, you know, there was never anything this overt, you know, I, I never felt like, they never felt like this abuse was so overt. And it has been in the last, you know, 15 years or so, you know, since this whole thing started back in two, almost 20 years, I guess, um, almost 20 years, about 19, 18, 19 years, um, that from my heart attack, my heart attack in 2001, after, yeah, basically, it, they, it's just gotten, their abuse has gotten stranger and stranger and more overt. I didn't have examples like this, you know. If they'd been doing stuff like this all along, where my friends and stuff could see it, then it would have been a little more obvious. But, you know, there wasn't anything that any of us were identifying before this. But now it's like, or in the last, you know, however long, it's like the things that they do are so obvious that you can miss them. I mean, that's a bizarre thing to do. Just a bizarre thing to do. And it doesn't stop there. I mean, I have so many stories about just even this, just only in this jail experience the things people did. By the way, that didn't stop there. When I got out of jail, they had taken it anyway. My brother had the keys and he let them in and they took it, or he maybe he even took it to them, I don't know. As well as some paintings and things, other, other things that my grandmother had given me that they didn't want at the time when she was giving, they thought it was just junk. And then they found out things, things had some value after they didn't want it, you know. But she was giving it to me and they took, they took everything they wanted. And I had to get it, I had to get it, a court order to get it given back to me. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, just crazy that they would, that they would go to the effort of coming to the jail. They, they wouldn't even think of it. It's the way, you know, I have lost everything. I am in jail. I mean, I am at my lowest low here. And they come to ask me to give them the china my grandmother gave me on my wedding day. Outrageous, you know, just so absolutely. I mean, that sense of entitlement that takes. You know, and the absolute detachment from your child's needs and best interests. And the absolute absence of love and compassion.
it's really unreal. And so, you know, when my, the one time my parents came to jail to visit me, <laughs> all right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. And I love you so much. And uh, yeah, just thanks for your continued support. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.